it is Labor Day weekend here in the States. Uh, people are going hog wild. I guess they're tired of being penned up and uh, everybody's coming out and I'm exhausted. I want. I don't want to see any more people. I want to go lock myself away from. But uh, yeah, it's very active here, and uh, I'm tired. <laughs> um, so here's uh, the synthetics, uh, which this is a DeFi product and a project. And as you know, uh, the DeFi space just got crushed this week with all kinds of stuff. Uh, being negatives coming out and looking like a lot of people taking profits real fast, like that sushi token. Um, but you know, it, it uh, this is where we're going to find out if the DeFi space has any real legs. And certain projects like the Synthetics is my favorite, uh, mainly because of what they do. What they're going to offer is the ability for us to trade shares, commodities, any number of things through blockchain. Uh, uh, mirrored like um, uh, and uh, you know it basically trade shares and all different asset classes and uh, that's fantastic so I'm you know very much a supporter of this idea uh, I'm not investing a lot because I again I don't know the real value proposition of the D5 space other than I like what these guys do um, now, if I look at this chart technically, uh, I would I would look to exit above this blue line where I started averaging in, buy, 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 buy. So far, I've been filled. I'm going to put another buy right down here. Mm -hmm. Let's see, is that the one? Yeah, I'm going to put it right down at under 350. Um, uh, yeah, again, this is not like a big, you know, uh, position for me. I, I'm mainly uh, interested in this. Uh, now, technically, you would look to sell above here, but uh, I'm going to go for more than that. I'm going to hold it, and I want to see if we can't make many times our money on it in the future. So it's kind of a gamble, uh, you know, and it's not something that I'm going to do to any real size because it does not... Uh, fit technically, you know, um, just doesn't. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll be adding and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Again, risky play, but uh, and I'm averaging, dollar cost averaging in, and um, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. I, I hope the DeFi space uh, grows. Um, that would be a good sign, you know. Uh, it's kind of ICO-ish in the way that it looks like it is run by a, lots of uh, undisciplined or, you know, hype-oriented people. And that kind of worries me. But this one project, what they're going to do and uh, what I've seen, I, I think they've got their act together and it looks very concise. And uh, uh, it would be fantastic, for especially for trading. Uh, and us as traders, this is what we really want. We want the ability to trade multiple asset classes and do it through blockchain. That would be fantastic. But again, you know, we I told you about the risks associated with that, you know, government-wise regulation. The big houses, when they find out we're doing this, they might not like it. But at the same time, this token might go up to $20 or, you know, some ridiculous amount because of popularity. Uh, it won't get... Uh, tagged until it becomes popular. So when this is in the 20 or 30 or whatever it goes to range, um, that and uh, you know you're way above there and people are using it and its ecosystem is growing, then the government's going to be going, what's going on? And that, but that's a long way off if that occurs. So not worried about it. Now let's get back to Bitcoin. As you can see here, we are with Bitcoin. Um, and it's dropping again, and I've got a buy here. Now, technically, I would want to sell it above the 10,800 range. I think I'll just keep it as a hedge. You know where I'm, I've got shorts. Uh, you've seen trades and so forth that I've done, and you know I'm mostly short 60% at the moment. And um, I'm looking for numbers that go all the way back down to our 
um, under 8,000 mark, which is down here. And uh, this is just a matter of statistics. I mean, it's not a, an emotional choice. You know, I, I've uh, watched a lot of videos lately, and a lot of people are very emotionally involved. I, I mean, I, I get it, we, especially with the D5 pumps and everything that have, have occurred. You see a lot of that in the marketplace. Um, uh, even the Robin Hood gangs of uh, the leverage traders and so forth, they've gone uh, you know, insane um, with their trading. And uh, you know, these young millennials are becoming gamblers, which I guess is good for market liquidity, but you know, trading doesn't care. You know, you're either going to be plus or negative, and you know the deal. Uh, you know my philosophy on that. Uh, those who chase dragons usually get burnt, and uh, we've proven that many times. Um, but yeah, that's where we are with Bitcoin. We're around 10,000. We look like we're going to go down here to test. I started buying again, and I'm probably going to be averaging in and just hedging versus my shorts and then trading it up and down. And um, But ultimately, I'm looking for the under 8,000 mark down here. And we'll see how that plays out. Uh, other than that, what interesting things do I have? We can take a look at silver. Silver is pretty steady. Uh, that's my second favorite and largest. You know the deal on that. Uh, it's gone all the way from that $12 area all the way down here, where we were, uh, you know, I was first telling you that's where. JP Morgan was likely to manipulate it and then reverse it, and they did, and you see the effects. And ultimately, I'm looking for the mid 30s and above for uh, silver to go there. And so it's pretty much just staying steady. And it really looks like it's going to be getting ready for the next move up, but we'll see. Um, lots of interesting things happened in the marketplace last week. Uh, you got Tesla. That came very close to, you know, banging all the way down to our target area. That would have been nice. Uh, it's popped a little bit here. But the news on it is, you know, not so great. And it's so overvalued. It's so ridiculously over. And, you know, it's an insane uh, combination of events. And it's mainly because Trump wants to be reelected. And the Fed's kind of working with them with providing them all this liquidity, you know. Um, but the average American is looking and saying, this doesn't really make sense, you know, and a large portion of the population, you know, like 10 million folks are out of work. And, um, you know, then you have the stock market going towards new highs. And you had stocks like Tesla you know, expanding. And this is creating a wealth inequality once again that's exacerbating. And it was already bad before, but now it's becoming kind of ugly and ridiculous. And you've seen some of the ramifications of, you know, um, protesters and all this. And that's not just racially charged. There's some socioeconomic um, intertwinings of this. Uh, your sheeple class of people, you know, they're, they're starting to wake up to the fact that they, they've been sold out, you know, and they're just basically sheep and, uh, you know, they're not being well fed is the only way I could put it. So... The owners of the pens are eating all the food, and, you know, leaving what little scraps are left for them. And in the current situation with the coronavirus, that's not going to be good um, going out. And when you start seeing people on TV uh, being evicted from their homes and being thrown out in the streets, it's just it's not going to play out well. And um, but that's capitalism for you. Uh, strong survive the weak, you know. Uh, and that's the cycle of life, unfortunately. And um, what other interesting things are out there? But as you see with Tesla, I'm still holding and I'm still going to wait for numbers under here. And we'll see how the market plays out. I see nothing. We're going into that downturn. Battery day is coming. You might have one more pump upwards. Because battery day is the 22nd. And that's their big announcement. Um, that's when they're going to come out with... Uh, you know, uh, what uh, advancements they've made. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see. I hope they, they have created something really fantastic. That would be cool because I'm still a fan of Tesla. But uh, 
their current valuation doesn't make them worth what they are when you're trading at 300 times your your PE ratio when your average stock is a uh, in the 30 range or 25 to 30 range um, yeah even a high valuation in the, the mid 30s is high so 300 times I want you to imagine that's um, you know nine uh, time eight eight to nine times your your average competition um, now do you really think Tesla is worth that but no of course not it's uh, so it's an exacerbation of a leadership position. That, that happens sometimes in stock. It's a good thing to know. Um, everybody wants the, the prompt queen. Uh, uh, so uh, that's the, the prompt queen um, uh, itis that you're getting with uh, Tesla. Um, now, other ones. Oh, let's see. Told you about silver holding steady. Now, what other ones do we have? AMD, wide variation down. Wow, look at this. I went all the way down to the 76. Nothing for me to do. I've already exited half of that and I'm just holding the rest. And if you can get above here, you know, I might suck, but there's no technical pattern other than this that I have right here. Uh, I kind of believe in this in the longer term, so I probably will just hold and be like, whatever. I've done well with it, um, and other than that, um, you know about my CVX uh, that went down further, it came close to the target, you know, again, this pattern, I had to take the exits on this around 85, uh, not because I wanted to, you know, even though I believe that it's going to go lower. Um, but because this is a danger, uh, if this breaks out to the upside uh, at any one point, uh, you can get a good movement above, back above the $100 range and uh, maybe even take out the highs. So I don't want to take the risk right here. And uh, so I took profits on it. It wasn't a bad trade. And uh, it's technically, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, it, it's not a. Uh, when you see this, it's nothing to think about. You know, you uh, take in the information, you make your move, and you move on. And that's pretty much what I've done. Um, and other than that, I don't see anything that I really want to uh, get involved in, um, you know, trading wise. I, I kind of do like Ethereum. Uh, I believe it's going to spike back up to the 400 range. But I want to see how far down it goes. It could also easily collapse back under the 300 area. So if it does, I might be looking to buy and start buying some Ethereum. Um, this has always had a wide ranging, you know, moves. And uh, so uh, we will see, but that's probably where I might go next. But anyway, um, back to the Labor Day weekend. And uh, it feels like it's Labor Day for me. Um, I, I want to find a monastery and basically just disappear from everything. <laughs> Go hide. Leave me alone. Let me look at my charts and whatnot. And, uh, go from there. But anyway, have a great weekend. And I'll talk to you guys next time.